Hi there, I'm Jamie Dyer. PCR is a technique that lets you make lots of copies of a specific sequence of DNA. Now, if you don't know how PCR works, the rest of this video won't make sense. So go check out this video if you need a refresher. OK, so you know how PCR works. RT-PCR is a really cool technique that lets Actually, RT-PCR is two different techniques. RT and RT-PCR stands for either reverse transcription PCR or real-time PCR, which are really different techniques. Sometimes scientists use the term qPCR to mean real-time PCR, but the naming convention is not standardized. So if you see the term RT-PCR, make sure you know whether they're talking about reverse transcription PCR or real-time PCR. And it's worth noting that these two techniques can be used independently on their own, or they can be combined, and I'll tell you about that in a second. Reverse transcription PCR is PCR that uses RNA as a template. Now, for a normal PCR reaction, DNA polymerase makes copies from a DNA template, not RNA. And in fact, DNA polymerase can only copy DNA. It cannot use RNA as a template. But what if the thing you're trying to copy is RNA and not DNA? Like, what if you want to know whether someone is infected with the COVID-19 coronavirus? You can't do regular PCR to detect coronavirus DNA in a sample because the coronavirus doesn't have DNA. It stores its genetic information as RNA instead of DNA. So to do PCR using an RNA template, you first copy the RNA into DNA using an enzyme called reverse transcriptase. Remember, transcription is when RNA polymerase copies DNA to make an RNA molecule. Well, reverse transcriptase copies RNA to make a DNA molecule. That's why it's called reverse. Since reverse transcriptase used the RNA molecule as a template, the sequence of that new DNA molecule is complementary to the RNA. So we call it cDNA. Once you have cDNA, well, that's just regular DNA you can use as template for a regular PCR reaction. But since you started by copying RNA into DNA using reverse transcription, we call it reverse transcription PCR. Right, so to test if someone has the COVID-19 coronavirus, scientists use reverse transcription PCR because the coronavirus has RNA, not DNA, as its genetic material. But let's say you don't just want to know if the coronavirus is present, you want to know how much is present in a sample. That's where real-time PCR comes in. For example, in this paper, scientists wanted to better understand how the COVID-19 coronavirus damages the human body. Now, we know the COVID-19 coronavirus is a respiratory disease, right? It affects the lungs. But we also know that in some severe or fatal cases, we see damage from the virus in different body parts. So the scientists who published this paper, they wanted to know how many copies of the virus were found in other parts of the body and how that correlated with damage in those body parts. To study that, they did autopsies on 10 people within hours of them dying of COVID-19. They took samples from tissues all over their bodies, but they wanted to know not just whether those tissues had virus particles in them, but how much virus was present in each sample. To figure that out, they used real-time PCR. Remember that normal PCR is an exponential process. If you start with just one copy of the DNA template, you'll have two copies after the first cycle, four copies after the second cycle, and so on. Now, if you start with 10 copies of template, that's a sample that doesn't have very much virus in it. Then in principle, after 35 cycles, you'll end up with over 300 billion copies of the DNA. And if you start with 10,000 copies of template, after 35 cycles, you should end up with 300 trillion copies of template. So why can't you just look at the end of the PCR reaction and see which sample has more DNA in it? I mean, that's a sample that started with more template DNA, right? The problem is a PCR reaction runs out of nucleotides before it can make that much DNA. So what actually happens is something more like this. At the end, both samples have the same amount of DNA, but the sample with more starting template made more DNA faster. So what real-time PCR does is it monitors the amount of DNA in the PCR tube in real time after every cycle. By comparing the curves of the samples with the curve for a known amount of template DNA, you can know exactly how much DNA you started with. That's why real-time PCR is often called quantitative or qPCR. One quick note, you can't do real-time PCR using a standard PCR thermocycler because there's no way to monitor how much DNA is present after each cycle. So to do real-time PCR, scientists use a fancy machine that can heat and cool like a normal PCR machine, but it can also measure the fluorescence of the PCR sample after each cycle. 
See, for real-time PCR, scientists add a dye to the PCR reaction that fluoresces in the presence of double-stranded DNA. More DNA means more fluorescence. By measuring the fluorescence after each cycle, the real-time PCR machine reports the amount of DNA product in real time during the PCR reaction. So remember the COVID-19 study? The scientists combined reverse transcription and real-time, or qPCR, to detect the amount of coronavirus in various tissues from the bodies of people who died from COVID-19. They found the highest levels of virus in the lungs, but they also found various levels of virus particles in tissues throughout the body, which can help us understand how the COVID-19 coronavirus attacks the human body. RT-PCR, in both its meanings, helps scientists answer some really interesting questions, including how the COVID-19 coronavirus kills people, which, if we understand it better, can help us save lives. Now that's cool.